Hello, Masoka Universe. Um, hard to believe, but I almost, almost feel healthy. I still sleep more than I probably would do normally. I still have a little cough and, you know, but uh, overall I feel almost well. So let's see how, where things will go. Uh, and hopefully next week I'm all fit and ready to take on the world again. I want to talk a little bit about Europa League. Uh, and I don't want to make this video too long. I watched highlights of every game. I watched the goal zone yesterday as much as I could. I napped away for the second half and at, uh, of the second set. And I didn't see um, a lot from the second half of the first set of games. But I was more or less, always the last 10 minutes, I was there again. So I could follow, you know, all the comments about it. So I, I have a good, a good, good sense of how everything went. And I could make a probably half hour video, but I don't want to. A, I don't want to bore you to tears. And B, it will take me forever to upload this one, I actually. And I'm talking already way too much. I want to keep this again under 10 minutes or something like that. Um, let's say under 15 minutes that they upload time doesn't take too long but I will really want to get everything in the first game actually happened already on Tuesday because there cannot be two Istanbul teams having a home match and they need to have a home match and so Fenerbahce played Zenit um, already on Tuesday and won one nil Fenerbahce is in serious trouble in the Turkish league which is one of the leagues I missed I wholly admit I wanted to actually get the Turkish league in there too um, they are trouble there, but they beat Zenit 1 0 and probably should have beaten them higher. Zenit actually uh, had a penalty that was deflected on the bar, nicely saved by, by, by the goalkeeper, but uh, overall, Fenerbahce should have won that one. Then let's start off, and I have the results here on the phone. I'm gonna go one to one and tell you whatever comes to my mind uh, without going into too much detail. First one is Rapid Wien against Inter. Uh, first of all, yeah, Austria. I'm from Austria, so this was kind of the glamour matchup uh, in, along these lines. Two teams that I love to hate. Absolutely love to hate. So, um, I cannot even say I I, I, I would be happy e either way. Um, the only intriguing part of this is this goes... They played once before and that was in 1990, right after the World Cup. And this was a big deal back then because the world champions that were playing at Inter, uh, Bremen, Matthäus, Klinsmann, were coming to Vienna and actually Rapid beat them 2-1. Um, and I didn't see, see the game. And I, I, I watched highlights now in the run-up. In, in run but to me, the interesting thing is that everyone's going, wow, Rapid beat uh inter that's big that, that, that's big i said yeah this is wow this is pretty cool uh so they've eliminated them no there's another an, a, another game and if inter wins one nil they are through and i was thinking that's not fair they beat them 2-1 and the only ones win one nil and that's that, that, that the concept of away goals back then i was 12 13 didn't make sense to me so uh but you know now I'm a big proponent for uh, away goals, uh, but on the other side, I have to say, 2-1 is a higher win than 1-0. Um, if I think about it that way, maybe we have to not go on the away goals, but the home goal rule. That would be interesting. That could actually be very interesting. That might actually um, give incentive for offense, but who knows. Anyway. Yesterday, um, Inter wins 1-0. Uh, they had most control of the game, but never could break down the Rapid Vienna. They got an absolutely stupid penalty uh, where an inexperienced Austrian defender, uh, he had the ball and then he fell, and then he had his outstretched leg. I mean, that's an invitation to Lautaro Martinez to uh, get to fall, and he converts. Rapid had one quick equalizing chance, but overall I think it was a deserved win for Inter who didn't do much but they did enough to win this game. Uh, Slavia, Henk, well, nil nil, not too exciting. Krasnodar, Le Leverkusen, also nil nil. Krasnodar had a huge chance in the first half. Leverkusen dominated the second half. 
would have gotten a goal, but it was a uh, rule out uh, because of handball. The big game, the big result in a way, but against Arsenal 1 0, and I loved it after 20 minutes. It's only a time until Arsenal scores, and suddenly Butter gets into the game, gets the header just ahead of, her, uh, of halftime. Uh, let's see, by Dragun. And plays it home. I mean, Arsenal tries to get more, but never could break through the defense. And then the Lacazette gets sent off for an elbow. Um, stupid, one has to say. The next one here is actually, should that sounds Champions League to me. Galatasaray Benfica. Maybe not cha Champions League knockout stage, but group stage. And both uh, were eliminated at the group stage. Galatasaray Benfica. And I think Benfica is one of those teams that can do some damage here. Uh, if they get it together. Uh, Benfica took an early took a lead uh, by Salvio through a penalty that was not really a penalty. I mean that that, that went off the chest. Uh, Luyen Dama uh, with a header equalizes, and then Seferovic just a few minutes later um, puts his body very strong uh, next to the defender, wills him in there without uh, conceding a foul, and makes it two one for Benfica, and that took care of that. Then. Uh, Another great game between Rennes and Betis, where Rennes took a 2 0 lead within the first 10 minutes. Uh, um, Lo Celso pulls one back. I mean, the second goal was an own goal. Uh, it was very contentious because, um, what's his name? Niang was lying there in offside, but you could see he jumps out of his way to let the ball go through, and uh, that came from uh, Javi Garcia. Los also made an uh, absolute mess out of his own shot. I think he shot himself on the shin, and that's how it went in. Uh, but then they get a penalty, uh, ran and make it 3-1 at halftime to Bern Arfa, and it uh, seems like this is a big result. No, they come back, bet this. Sinel in the 60s... Uh, 62nd and Lioness, 18 year old Mexican, makes it 3 3. That was an exciting game, I gotta say, and it looked marvelous, uh, jersey wise. Another uh, exciting game, probably the best goal of the, uh, of, of the night Olympiakos against Dinamo Kiev. Um, Olympiakos takes twice the lead, um, especially the second goal by Gildias was an absolute screamer. Controls the ball from far out and then puts it into internet. But Bujalski and Verbic uh, put it back also. Jersey wise, a really nice game. And I love those Dynamo shirts. Yes, when I did the review, they didn't have a sponsor, which make, made me like them more. But those look great. I really gotta, gotta give those a really great Dynamo Kiev shirts. I uh, would like to see more of these. Uh, and then, big name matchup, but uh, given recent form, Kind of a so and so Lazio against Sevilla. Sevilla took a lead basically through the first offensive action the entire game, but it was beautifully played. And Bineda uh, slots it home. Uh, Lazio with Adi Mobile and Milinkovic Savic. And then, yeah, uh, they had an equalizing chance. It was cleared off the line. Uh, couldn't, couldn't get really a thing going. Lazio to me seems toothless at the moment. And Sevilla is still a force to be reckoned with in Europe. Now let's get to the later set of games. Club Brugge against Salzburg. That was, uh, again, I don't like Salzburg, but I'm, I'm, get, I'm a bit more excited about them than about Rapid, to be honest, because they actually play well and they actually can do some damage. But I knew that Brugge is one opponent that uh, will not suit them well, even if they're not doing well in the league at the moment, uh, thanks to Football Gate. Um, and yeah... <sighs> Salzburg controlled the game, got an early lead through Janusovic because a uh, goalkeeper wanted to meet the ball, slipped and then he could lob it kind of nicely over, had chances to make it 2-0 at halftime, controlled the game for 60 minutes, then Brügge scores, uh, had already hit the uh, uprights before, and then it happens, uh, absolutely the weird goal makes it 2-1 for Brügge. And there it goes. Uh, Salzburg loses for the first time uh, this season. And whenever I, you know, no, no, whenever they, this happened before, when they uh, to stand at the Liege, I think they lost a similar game. And then they couldn't turn it around in, uh, at home. And this has the same feel here. Pilsen Zagreb, similar story. Zagreb takes the lead away from home. And Pilsen, after the break, uh, turns turns it around. Also, this could be 
Zagreb. But I trust more Zagreb to make the calls, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Malmö, Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, it couldn't have been a better opponent. Uh, Malmö doesn't start the league until a month from now. A month. And now they have to play Chelsea. That That is that's just something not fair. Chelsea uh, scores the two goals. Uh, who was it? Barkley and Giroud. Giroud's goal was really nicely done with his feet. Uh, back with the heel. Uh, but Malmö pulls one back uh, late in the game and make it 1-2. Uh, probably the best game of the evening. And it's hard to say with the 3-3. But I think the best game was Schachter against Eintracht Frankfurt, and I got to see a lot of it. The first 15 minutes are absolutely insane. First of all, 1-0, uh, first not before I say 1-0. The game was played in Kharkiv, and there are 3,000 fans of Frankfurt there. I never knew that Frankfurt had such a, a strong um, support. This is nuts. Absolutely impressive. I mean, there was the... Oh, a whole section only with flags and so on. They had they had great support in Kharkiv. Better than Schachter, I think. And they took the lead through Hinteregger, where Piatov didn't look well. I mean, he was headed in the short short corner right there, and Piatov uh, puts it in. They get then, a few minutes later, uh, Schachter gets a relatively cheap penalty. Uh, Garga say yes, he was pushed, but for an English referee... I'm not sure if that re really was one. And um, Marlos converts the penalty. Uh, the goalkeeper trap was right there. And then uh, a yellow red for Stepanenko in the 6th and, uh, and in, in, in the 11th gets sent off. Commentator said his wife must be cooking his fav favorite meal because he's off so fast. Uh, it was harsh, I guess, if you look at both uh, yellow cards individually. I mean, the second one was surely a yellow card, but... That's how it often goes. Uh, so Frankfurt plays for 80 minutes uh, with a man more. Has a little bit more more of the game, but uh, before halftime cannot really get it going. The uh, game slows down. But then after the half, they really are going for it. Kostic makes a 2-1. But instead of Frankfurt going for the kill, no. It is Schachter with 10 men who actually gets control of, of, of the game. And, and you can see what a great side they actually are. And Tyson, absolute wonderful combination, makes it 2-2. Frankfurt is then pushing uh, for the third goal, but don't get it. I think the closest was again Hinteregger, just missing by a little bit. But that was a, a very in, in, interesting and emotional game. Uh, Valencia beat Celtic rel relatively easy. 2-0. Uh, the most interesting thing is the first goal uh, by Cherishev was assisted by Sobrino, who were both running a low, long goal, more or less. And then right after the halftime... Uh, Cherishev returns the favor and sets up Sobrino, makes it 2-0. Uh, Napoli also relatively easy against uh, FC Zurich. Um, the first goal, goalkeeping mistake. He fails to stop, to stop, to stop the ball. Uh, I think Milik uh, gets it off him, passes it to Insigne. Slots, slots it home. Uh, second goal was... Uh, no, by Kaya Khan, who actually shoots on his own shin again, uh, gets it in. Zielinski makes it 3 0. A wonderful penalty uh, by Zurich. Watch it. This is a panical type, but a really nicely executed. Reminds me a lot about the Zidane penalty against Buffon in the World Cup final 2006. And the last one is a very surprising result. Villarreal gets a very early goal at Sporting. And Sporting only gets a yellow red, nothing else. Uh, I would have expected Villarreal that Sporting, as a kind of top team in Portugal, can handily take a uh, relegation threatened team from La Liga. Nope, that's not that. So 1 0 for Villarreal, and they have the advantage there. Villarreal in the Europa League is a different story. I enjoy Europa League. I just wish it was a little bit more spread, spread out. Um, take four games on Tuesday at 7 o'clock, take four games on. Thursday at seven, uh, on Wednesday at seven, seven, seven o'clock, and then have to split up four four. Uh, it makes it a little bit more manageable, uh, and I don't think it will take away too much from the Champions League. And to put those games because there's so many games in Eastern Europe. Those would should be the ones at seven o'clock, I think, uh, or do something. Uh, 
spread it out a little bit more. All of them together, it makes for great watching for the goal zone. I won't deny that. But I think it undersells the competition a little bit. And I know people are joking about the Europa League. I don't see it. I really like this competition. I think there's more fun in there than sometimes the Champions League. Yeah, Champions League has better uh, soccer. But I think the more exciting ties are in the Europa League. It's a much more even competition. So, although this year Champions League for now looks all right. Well, let me know what you thought about Europa League, Champions League and all those kind of things. As you see, I'm on the up. Happy about that. Knock on wood here. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.